there was finally a neorealist movement in Los Angeles, led by young black filmmakers from the South. Haile Garima from Ethiopia, Charles Burnett from Mississippi, Billy Woodbury from Texas. Haile Garima's Bush Mama is another movie about the police, but it is one of the first to show cops entirely from the other side, from the viewpoint of the brutalized, the black people of South Los Angeles, who are made to feel they live in an occupied territory. Neorealism describes another reality, and it creates a new kind of protagonist. Dorothy, the Bush mom, is a seer, not an actor. There's a crack in the world of appearances, and she is defenseless before a vision of everyday reality that is unbearable. Who knows the city? Only those who walk. Only those who ride the bus. Forget the mystical blatherings of Joan Didion and company about the automobile and the freeways. They say nobody walks. They mean no rich white people like us walk. They claim nobody takes the bus until one day we all discovered that Los Angeles has the most crowded buses in the United States. The white men who run the transit authority responded to the news not by improving service, but by discouraging ridership. They raised fares. They stopped printing maps of the bus system. They refused to post route maps or schedules at bus stops. They put their money into more glamorous subway and light rail projects sued for discrimination. They accepted a consent decree and then rejected its provisions. The people try to tell me to stop crying. Neorealism also posits another kind of time, a spatialized, non-chronological time of meditation and memory. The baby is dead. You understand what I'm saying? The baby is dead. She's dead. What you doing up there, woman? In Bush Mama, everything is filtered through Dorothy's consciousness. And the film follows it as it slides freely from perception to memory. Charles Burnett's Killer of Sheep seems suspended outside of time. Burnett blended together the decades of his childhood, his youth, and his adulthood, and added an idiosyncratic panorama of classic black music, from Paul Robeson to Lowell Folsom. So a portrait of one family and its neighborhood became an epic of black endurance and heroism. The police are absent in Killer of Sheep, and everyone has a car or a truck, although they're often more trouble than they're worth. The protagonist has a job. He is the killer of sheep, but a job can break your heart, too. White America had declared a crisis of the black family as a cover for its campaign of incremental genocide 
against its expendable ex-slave population, rendered superfluous by immigrant labor power. So black filmmakers responded by emphasizing families and children. Although Hollywood would lend credence to the assault by imagining South Central as a dystopian theme park of crack whores and drive-by shootings, independent black filmmakers showed that the real crisis of the black family is simply the crisis of the working class family, white or black, where family values are always at risk because the threat of unemployment is always present. So many men, unneeded, unwanted, in a world where there is so much to be done. Billy Woodbury's Bless Their Little Hearts takes a drive by a reverse landmark one of the closed industrial plants that had once provided jobs for the black working class of Los Angeles. and closed in 1980. The Goodyear factory on South Central Avenue was the first and largest of the four major tire manufacturing plants once located in the Los Angeles area. Once upon a time, visitors could take a guided tour and see how tires were made. Just as today, they can take a studio tour and see how movies are made. Tell me. Tell me. 